Ah, there is the thumbs up. Yep. Okay. Thank you. We are uh, recording now, guys. Okay. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Um, the presentation for today. All right. Is that okay to start now? Yes. Cool, cool. So welcome everyone to NAS Create. Um, it's good to have you here with us today. We love hosting and making these sessions for you. If you're tuning in um, to this lesson, please say hi in the comment box below. We would love to know who you are, if you're a regular learner or if you are a new learner, we welcome absolutely everyone. Just in case, um, if you are new to create sessions, these sessions are intended as a safe haven for you um, to inspire you and to uh, help you create while also learn a little bit about English. Every week, we are bringing fresh ideas, perspectives, stories from different people to inspire you and to stimulate your creativity. We are also trying to make the sessions as easy as possible for you to understand. But if you're having trouble about understanding, um, if you hear words that you don't recognize, words that you don't really understand, please let us know in the question. Uh, please let us know your questions in the comment box below. Um, just type in um, any spelling of the words that you don't know or if you can just point out the minutes or the seconds of that um, words being said and we'll be able to help you. A little bit background on NAS as well. Um, NAS is a community that stands for Northeast Solidarity and Teaching. We offer in, uh, lessons about English and beyond um, to the refugee and asylum seekers in Newcastle. Um, our sessions include this um, session like Create, um, where you do see make art, or we also have other sessions such as conversation groups, kids lessons, etc. Now, if you'd like to make a contact with us, um, you're welcome to send an email to nest.union at ncl.ac.pk, or you can find us on Instagram, uh, nest underscore, underscore uh, nusu. Um, or you can leave a comment down on the video below. Um, yeah, sorry. Now, your host for today are Monica and Kezia. Uh, so I'm Kezia, uh, and Monica is here with me. Mon, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, so hi, everyone. Um, if you have been coming to NAS um, three years ago, you've probably know us or possibly heard about us. We were students at Newcastle University and we started volunteering together at NAS, um, especially for CREATE three years ago. We are currently back in our home country, Indonesia, but the NAS has always been in our hearts and that is why we are back here today. Yes. We really miss NAS uh, and Newcastle as well a lot. So if you live in Newcastle, please eat Greg's for us. Um, mm -hmm. Okay for you to go out and give a high five to the awesome Bridget for us as well. Yes, obviously after all of this physical distancing is over, um, not safe for you to go out and eat Greg's or give a high five to people, but please do so, give a high five to Bridget, um, hug her for us, um, for both of us. So this is our first YouTube session as well with Ness. So please bear with us. I'm sorry if there are um, difficulties uh, in you um, understanding or watching our video, but we hope that you enjoy this session. Um, today we are bringing to you our um, dear friends who are also artists. It's because um, although Monica and I used to do create sessions, we are actually not very qualified to teach you about arts. Um, I don't have a degree in arts. Uh, Monica has one, but she doesn't really use it. Uh, that's why today we bring to you um, our friends who are artists. Um, they are going to do a, 
art workshops um, with you. Uh, the first session will be delivered by Karin, who is an art teacher, and the second session will be delivered by Ryoga, um, who is an architecture student in the UK. Um, so our first artist is here. Uh, Karen is here. I'm going to ask her to share her. Oh, there she is. Hi, Karen. Hello, KJ. Hi, Monica. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. We really appreciate um, your time a lot. Um, I was wondering if you'd be able to let us know a little bit about yourself, what you do, um, things you love doing, and etc. Okay, thank you. Um, hi everyone, my name is Karin. Uh, I'm 25 years old. I used to study fine arts in Northumbria University in the UK. And that's how we all came to know each other. I am now back in Indonesia since 2016. And I have been an art teacher for two years now. I teach uh, research in art and also conceptual writing for high school students at Erudio Indonesia, that's the name of the school. And in my spare time, I also uh, like to write and draw, and uh, I like to play music and read and be with my friends and my family, just normal, basic stuff so yeah i guess that's it for me cool um i guess you mentioned a little bit about uh things that you like doing you like writing and you like uh painting and drawing i guess um could you tell us a little bit about when you first started to fall in love with art with all of those things or maybe uh, your first experience comes from uh just writing or just painting and then it kind of just intersects, I guess. Right. Um, yeah, that's a very interesting and difficult question to answer. <laughs> uh, but my experience with art is kind of, um, it's quite organic, I would say. So there wasn't a particular moment that was really life-changing uh, but I remember uh, my mom keeps telling me that ever since I was a little girl I always write uh, whenever wherever however uh, and I think that was my first encounter with art uh, and then I also love to listen to classical piano music as well growing mm. up study uh, classical piano as well so that is also a big part of uh, of who I am as I grow up and uh, and then I encountered visual art during uh, high school um, mm. but I was very good at it I wasn't good at all actually uh, but I like doing it anyway uh, regardless of whether I'm good or not so um, I just keep doing it I just keep uh, writing I keep drawing I keep listening to music I keep watching films I keep reading books and I would always feel happy doing all these stuff and when I graduated high school I thought to myself what I should do for the rest of my life and I just cannot imagine doing anything else other than doing what I do now, which is, I guess, art. That's really cool. <laughs> That's really cool. I couldn't imagine doing art full time. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with my hands. I don't know what to do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, most of the time, I don't know what to do anyway, so. <laughs> Intuition, I guess. Yeah. In an improvisation, I guess. So. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Mm. Yep, uh, that's, I think it's really interesting that you really have like different, I guess, like different forms of art. Um, and I guess I wanted to jump in a little bit 
on probably the session you're going to today. Can you tell us a little bit about um, what is a concrete poetry for you? Yes, I would love to. So, um, concrete poetry uh, essentially would be, um, it's basically sculptures made out of text. I think that's the simplest way of describing what concrete poetry is. Um, so normally sculptures would work with wood or metal or clay uh, or plastic or these materials that you find uh, in your daily life. And so uh, around the, uh, the mm, I'd say late 1950s and 1960s in America, um, there was this uh, search, there was this um, period where when artists uh, suddenly explore different materials to make sculptures uh, and wood, metal, plastic, clay, all these things are very common, but they realized that nothing is more common than language because we use it every day. So why not try make sculptures based out of language? I think that was the initial mm, foundation uh, to concrete poetry uh, that we came to know now. So, yeah. Well, I've never really heard about that. And that's really cool, I think, because uh, I guess it's true that language is basically common for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, probably if you could show us um, how do we make a concrete poetry? Okay. Yeah. Feel free to share your screen as well. I'm going to stop sharing mine. Okay, I'll share mine. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Wow. Oh, sorry. Messy desktop. <laughs> <laughs> An artist desktop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So, yeah. Uh, I guess, yes, we've covered that uh, uh, in the second question just now, what concrete poetry is. Um, so we'll move on to, I think, just uh, introductions to two artists that um, I think I could call my personal favorite probably to talk about in regards to uh, this movement in art. So the first artist is Carl Andre. I hope you can see the name on, the, on your screen right now. Um, yeah. Carl Andre is uh, an American artist. Uh, he is born in 1935. Um, and he mainly works uh, with sculpture and installation. And this is... Uh, I'll, I'll be showing you a couple of uh, Carl Andre's works. So uh, as you can see now, uh, Carl Andre is a sculptor first and then a poet later, if I can say it like that. Um, so here you see um, one of his sculpture called the called From Map of Poetry. Uh, and that is uh, one of his uh, exploration on sculptures using uh, wood. And on the right is his poetry or concrete poetry called Setter Piece. Mm. And, yeah, so if, if you can see uh, directly, I put it side by side so that the uh, similarity is uh, striking or it can be easily noticeable yeah. but uh, basically what I just said with uh, concrete poetry how it is essentially sculptures made out of text or sculptures made out of language uh, I think is pretty clearly embodied in uh, on these two works uh, of Carl Andres uh, and I think uh, a spotlight would to, would be to notice the uh, the words that are actually in the poetry. Um, it's 
uh, can probably uh, Keja maybe yeah. if you want to try to read what's actually in the poetry yeah um, it says flip rock sound yeah fins then, fins uh, fins and then ledge bear <laughs> uh, Wait, am I reading it? I'm gonna try it anyway. And yes. then there's lion again. No, I don't know. And then there's commissioners ledge, mm -hmm. and then and there's legend, but as island as well. Oh no, mm -hmm. I c yeah, no. Uh, and then there's muzzle and green. I don't know. Am <laughs> I reading this correctly? <laughs> I think that's I think that's the most interesting part of concrete poetry is that you really can't read it wrong. There's no wrong way of reading it because it's not written in a traditional way. Like it doesn't make mm. sense at its core. So I I don't think anyone can make a mistake trying to read it, you know? Mm. Sorry, yeah. if on that note, can I ask you a question? Um, would that apply to the same uh, to another piece of artwork as in like, could you read an artwork wrong? Could you be, ever be wrong in reading an artwork? Very interesting question. I don't know how to um, answer for all. I think mm -hmm. the answer will, will vary from one person to the next. But um, in my opinion, there is absolutely no wrong way to look at art or to uh, receive art uh, because once an artwork is out there I don't think there's um, I don't think it's no longer the artists it's mm. the publics mm -hmm. so yeah I think there's that shift of uh, possession Mm -hmm. uh, there's that shift of belonging from the artist to the audience and once it is out there it's naturally uh, yours and what's yours you can interpret it however you like uh, mm -hmm. and of course it varies from our understanding towards art varies because we vary as well mm -hmm. we are own individuals so there is no wrong way to look at art just as there is no wrong way to to be oneself you mm. know mm -hmm. that's cool thanks <laughs> yeah no problem thank you for the question and uh thank you for the reading as well mm. um i think uh an, an important note in concrete poetry is also because uh, uh this this movement this style uh, came up to the surface because uh, basically the artist prioritizes um, more of the outlook, more of the shape of the poetry rather than the sense, rather than the the meaning of the text itself. So it, it can just be uh, words, random words placed next to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, but as long as it creates that shape, the desired shape of the sculpture, then um, that we can call that a concrete poetry, basically. So I think a concrete poetry is a sculpture first and then a, um, a, po a poetry after that. So yeah, uh, that's w uh, two of Carl Andre's work. And I'll be showing you two more. This is... Um, uh, uh, Carl Andre, uh, this piece on the left is called, I am not sure how to read it actually, Trabum, mm -hmm. Tra 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 I don't know how to call it, uh, but yeah, that's also, I think, made out of uh, wood, blocks of wood, um, arranged um, crisscross like that, and on the right is one of his other concrete poetry called M M not M not willing, mm. and also the year uh, that it's published, that it's exhibited, and basically I think uh, it's the same principle as the the previous two works. Um, 
with this one, I think you can see um, how each uh, each line of the the words of the sentences kinds of uh, are on a stack within each other, just like the woods on uh, Trebum. And this is just another example of how Carl Andre um, manages to um, combine or utilize language as a material for sculpture. So yeah, uh, and can I maybe ask Monica to uh, read the the piece on the right, please, if you don't mind. Yeah, I got an easier one than Kiya. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> so uh, it's I'm I'm not I'm not willing, not willing at at present to willing present to sell all the I'm I'm not I'm not willing <laughs> at all the desire I'm not willing at at present to. Okay, um, can we maybe experiment so that uh, Monica can say the writings on the left and Keja can say the writings on the right? Okay, so okay. I'll start. Okay. Um, hey, sorry, do I just read it vertically down or is it one word, one word? Uh, I think, well, it's up to you. <laughs> it's up to, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, I think let's do one word, one word. Okay. Okay. Um, willing. Wait, which word are you reading? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm, I'm reading the last one, right? And then you live, you're reading the wrong one, is it? Yeah, where's the, where's the right one? Right one is the willing. To and then present. Yeah. Okay. I think so. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, let's start. I'm hmm. willing. Not present. Willing to at day. Present. Willing to to <laughs> tell day all of me. At do sell desire do mm. feel, free, feel free to stop anytime <laughs> <laughs> or if you want to continue it's okay with me too but i know we have a du duration is that right yeah yep. okay. yeah but uh that was really nice uh that was a nice reading of uh Carl, even though it's not complete but it was a mm. nice reading and i hope you too have the that the the sense um, of it all being stacked. Hmm. Uh, I mm, think. Okay, I get it now. Yeah, when it's two yeah. two speakers, two readers, it it, it will uh, intensify the stacking experience even more. I think. Hmm. Yeah, I hope you're not. Uh, I hope you guys are okay with doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Okay, uh, um, let's continue to the next slide. So this is an article I found about Carl Andre and I have uh, underlined the, uh, uh, I think, the points of interest that maybe we can pay attention to. So I'm just gonna read it. Uh, Andre's ideas with letters and words were elemental to the extreme. Uh, his typewriter was an instrument no more or less blunt than any other sculpture's tool. So essentially, um, he really look at language uh, at a very fundamental level, very basic, very uh, naked even, um, because he saw language or text or word or letters as, um, a material much like wood or stone or plastic or clay and if a sculpture uses a sculpting tool Andre's uh, tool was his typewriter so mm -hmm. that was his instrument um, and here we can see some of them made up of blocks of text 
have to be read backward to be parsed or decoded. Others are so simple as to be self-evident. So it is both complex and simple at the same time. And like we've discussed, I think there is no wrong way to access uh, these works. And I think that's very beautiful um, to have that much freedom uh, about your art. Uh, and at this last uh, uh, underlined sentence here is whole poems are made out of many single poems we call words. So um, basically I think uh, Carl Andre sees uh, words itself as already a poetry. And so when he combined uh, many words, he is essentially creating bigger and bigger and bigger poetries. Um, so yeah, it's like a, an ecosystem made out of little um, organisms. And I think that's interesting. So that's Carl Andre. <laughs> and shall I move on to the next artist? Yeah, sure. So the second artist and the last artist that I want to talk about is called Robert Smithson. He is also uh, an American artist born in 1938. And he is also a sculptor. Uh, this is a, I don't know if this is a coincidence or not, but he is also a, a sculptor and a land artist as well. And I'm gonna be showing you one of his work. This is, um, this is called A Heap of Language and it was exhibited in 1966. So basically, um, maybe I can engage Monica in this, uh, in, in the question that I'm about to ask. Uh, can I ask Monica, like, what do you see in this piece of art? Uh, I think, like, for the first impression, it's like seeing a mountain for me. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Anything else? Um, it's like a mountain with grass and flowers. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, okay. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, I think uh, my, upon my first impression, I also see mountains. Uh, and I don't know if that's because the title is A Heap of Language mm -hmm. or because I think we all know the shape of a mountain. Mm -hmm. um, so that is very familiar in our... Uh, in our ex life experience. And so we ultimately always uh, associate something that is um, shaped, um, stacked like that in a, in a triangular form, kind of uh, resembles a mountain. So uh, my first impression is uh, also a mountain, but I think that's very interesting that you say that it is, um, you can see grass and flowers as well. I think maybe mm. from the uh, scripture, um, from his handwriting as well, because it's very flowery and uh, very uh, vividly um, visual, actually. Mm. Yeah. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and this is, I think, one of his uh, few concrete poetry works. Uh, and I think this is also one of uh, one of those kind of works that are complex but also simple. And you can choose to engage in its simplicity, or you can go through and investigate the complexity. It's really up to you. But uh, I think if you look at it in a simple way, it is shaped. It is basically a mountain full of text. Mm. Uh, but if you want to go deeper and try to analyze it, I think we can uh, maybe read the text to get more sense of what it's actually talking mm. about. So, um, but yeah, I think uh, one of the more important thing about, uh, one of the m more interesting thing about this artwork is also the usage of the paper that he is writing on as well. Uh, because you can see that it's not just plain paper, it's actually uh, grid paper. And he, uh, he wrote down numbers as well, horizontally. 
and I don't know what that indicates actually, but I'd like to think that maybe um, he's trying to make this piece more mathematical than uh, visual, so it's more systematical than systematic, systemic. It's more systemic than uh, than it is um, visual. I think I don't know, but that's just my interpretation. Uh, but I hope you guys can see how uh, this is also a concrete poetry uh, in regards to what we've seen from Carl Andre as well. So, mm. Yeah, and I think uh, he uh, really, uh, um, he really was very thoughtful with the way he titles his uh, piece right here. So it gives enough clue to what uh, the piece is actually about, but not too much at the same time. So it's still free and up to interpretation mm. as well. So yeah, that's uh, Robert Smithson. And this is a piece of article as well that I've um, excerpted. Uh, I'm gonna read it. Marrying the artist's preoccupations with the physical presence of sculpture, and the meaning behind language. So here we see again um, an article um, trying to connect the relationship between sculpture and language as well, uh, similar to um, Carl Andre's work. And here I'm gonna go off uh, off uh, the underlined words as well. This piece right here, written in the artist's elegant cursive on graph paper. Words are about words, about words, speech, mother tongue, babel, accumulate into a hefty pile, so that thought becomes thing. Yeah, so I think that's very interesting how it says thought becomes thing because um, what was once just uh, a string of words or a sequence of thoughts now is actually um, given dimension by the artist and it becomes a thing that we can identify as a mountain or grass or flowers like Monica has uh, said uh, earlier and here we have uh, the last sentence, this drawing attests to Smithson's belief that language is a concrete ma material. And yeah, that again, that ties in with uh, what we've learned from Carl Andre as well, how both of them uses uh, text and language and everything it, uh, it entails uh, as material to make sculptures, basically. So that is, the first portion, I think, of this workshop is the introduction and the inspiration of concrete poetry and how it came to be. Um, is like, do we, uh, sh shall we move on to the activity now, maybe? Yes, definitely. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, let's do it together. So um, it's gonna be a really simple exercise. Um, but I hope you all can um, can join and participate. Uh, so I hope you have your paper and uh, writing equipment. If not, please try to find just a regular paper like this. It doesn't have to be that big, uh, but maybe slightly larger than small so just a medium sized paper because it's gonna um it's gonna help you uh do this activity if you have more space like this this is i think um a good size of paper so and then just a pen or pencil or any writing equipment is fine whatever you choose and if you already have these equipments the first instruction would be um, just to take a few moments to imagine your favorite object. So our lives are filled with objects. We are hoarders, we are collectors. 
uh, we rely on our possessions, unfortunately. <laughs> so um, just for now, just try to imagine one object. Just imagine an object that comforts you or that you like very much. So yeah, I'll give you about uh, maybe one minute to, to do this first instruction. Mm -hmm. um, what is my favorite object? <laughs> I'm, gonna be doing, I'm gonna be doing the workshop with you. Yeah, well. I think I'm gonna do as well. <laughs> Uh, Mon, what's your favorite object? Pillow. Uh, pillow, okay. <laughs> a bed, a bed. Yep. Uh, Very good I'm, thing. I think one of my favorite objects. Uh, I know. It, what, what? Cards. <laughs> yeah, I do like cards, but it's it's a boring shape, right? Because it's just square. So I'm, I think I'm gonna do rings. Hmm. Like a ring, yeah, because it's circular. Nice. I'm still trying to figure out mine. Mm. Should give a few pointers. Um, you can do glass. Yeah. Like glass, or you can do anything. Uh, a mug or uh, a book, an open book or a chair. A chair would be interesting with the shape. Yeah, or like a bottle, a random bottle like this, or a seashell, maybe I have a seashell right here, or mm. anything actually, mm. but it is harder than, um, it is harder when you actually have to imagine it, so, um, have you guys found yours? Yep. Yes? Okay, okay. Uh, so, uh, when you have imagined your favorite object, now we can move on to number two. Now, try to imagine one word or a sentence in your mind. So, yeah, one word or a sentence, it's completely up to you. Um, and I will stress that, uh, um, shall we make it in English or can it be in any language? I guess technically it can be in any language, but because we're learning English right now, um, maybe we could start with an English word. Okay, perfect. So yeah, uh, try to imagine one, one English word or one English sentence in your mind, and this is completely up to you. Uh, you don't, yeah, it's, there is no boundary or there is no right or wrong uh, in this regard, so. I'll give you maybe uh, two minutes to imagine this. Okay, I'm gonna imagine mine. I think I'm going to use some of the words from the sentence. <laughs> Very easy. Okay. I think I've got my work. That's great. Oh, I can't imagine mine yet. <laughs> okay. Mm. Okay, one more minute. Hmm. Z, what's your word? Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use Newcastle. <laughs> oh. Basically, you, you can use NAS, you can use Northeast. Yeah. Solidarity teaching. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, you got yours, one? Yes. Mine is truck. <laughs> what? Sorry? Trucks. I'm working a lot with trucks. Sharks? Uh, yep. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Now, what do, what do we do with the words? Okay. Yes. Okay. So, 
time, yeah, okay, two minutes uh, has have passed. Uh, I hope you all have a word or a sentence in your mind. And uh, the third uh, and final instruction is to grab your paper and to finally start writing down this word or this sentence in the form of your favorite object. So, okay. uh, Keja, uh, Keja's word is Newcastle, and yeah. your object is a ring. Mm -hmm. so now you try to write Newcastle in the form of a ring. Okay. And Monica's uh, uh, word is shark. Yes, and your object is a pillow. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm wondering. Uh, put that yeah. in. So please um, write sharks in the form of a pillow or anything that you decide is your favorite object. But basically, uh, now is the time to finally uh, write down because I've been asking you just to imagine. Now you can actually write it down. So uh, I'm going to give you maybe... Uh, what is, is... Am I doing okay with time? I actually haven't kept it. One, do you know what's the time? Um, I think we have about five minutes. Five, minu five minutes? Yeah, five. Five minutes to do this instruction? Oh, no, I mean like five for the whole session, but I guess it's okay for us to a bit like run over a little bit. Sure. So I'll give you three minutes. Um, to do the third instruction. How's that? Okay? Yep. Okay. We'll let you know if we can finish like yeah, what we we'll know. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, no worries. Uh, so three minutes to, to do this. And yeah, I think we'll check back. Um, we'll, be, we'll be with you while, while you're also doing this. Okay, so three minutes from starting from now. Okay. One more minute.
30 more seconds. Okay, I think that's three minutes. I don't keep a timer, but um, I think we can maybe uh, stop writing for now. Uh -huh. And yeah, even though I'm not, I'm not even finished with mine, but uh, I think uh, if anyone's not finished as well, uh, you can, always continue this after uh, uh, this workshop has ended uh, in your own free time. Uh, but I just would like to, um, to ask uh, Keja and Monica, yeah. uh, like, uh, do, can you turn on your videos and show uh, your actual writing slash drawing? Is that possible? Yes. Okay. Uh, Although mine is not very good at all, <laughs> but there's no such thing as bad writing and bad art, right? There is no such thing. <laughs> uh, I think I've just started my video. Can you see me? Yes, I can see you. I can't see myself because uh, in order to record. Okay, that's me. Mon, okay. are you here? So this is my... <laughs> attempt at um, concrete poetry Ooh. so I try to make like two kind of so with the ring you have like the actual ring and the rock right or like mm -hmm. some stud or something mm -hmm. so put the word into the first um, mm -hmm. the circle of the ring and then the word and that the same word to the to become the rock right so that's Newcastle, right? Yes. That's lovely. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, You're welcome. How, like, um, how, how does that make you feel? Like, how does uh, writing that and drawing that makes you feel just now? It makes me anxious a little bit because I'm not a good uh, drawer. I think I said in the beginning that I don't know what to do with my hands. So I'm a bit like, oh, this doesn't really take form of a good shape, you know? But other than that, it's nice kind of imagining the word and the, the shape, the object, because both of the words and the object is, are my favorite things. Like I really like Newcastle, I really like living in Newcastle, and I really like rings. Uh, so uh yeah anxious but also kind of interesting i guess okay thank you for sharing that okay so welcome monica do you want to share yes please monica hi hi okay mine is here. i'm not sure if that is even a shape wow <laughs> that is so much better <laughs> i'm not sure that's cool. I can see that it's a pillow. Yeah, I can also see because you made little uh, indentations. Mm. On the yes. Yeah. Sharks. So uh, it's sharks, yeah. The writing. Oh, it's um, sharks. Sorry, I wasn't, I think my thing wasn't really clear. Oh, it's sharks. Yep. Oh, I thought it's sharks as in like the... Like baby shark, do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah, I thought that's <laughs> okay. Mm. Well, can you share your um, feeling and how has the experience been for you, uh, Mon? Um, I think it's really interesting in a way. I've tried to design with um, words in a sense, but I mostly use like digital ways, you know, like Photoshop, like with fonts um, and stuff. So I think it's really interesting to try it using like handwritten where mm -hmm. all the fonts are not be the same, like the spaces of the font, you can just um, control it on your So I think it's a really interesting process, which I've never done previously. Mm. Yeah, uh, 
Okay, well, that's great. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you both for participating and for sharing your experience. It's very humbling. Uh, and yeah, feel free to do this anytime you feel like you want to just like if you want to have something to do with your hands, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Feel free to do this anytime. Um, there is no bad writing, there's no wrong writing as well. Uh, so yeah, I hope uh, everyone can uh, do this exercise uh, without judging themselves. I think that would be a good, um, I think that's a good value in art, I think. That's how art can mm. be therapeutic for us. So yeah, uh, but I, I'm i not, can I maybe share mine just as a closer? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, so mine, I my object, is actually a moon but this is not done so i guess i guess it can be like a half moon but not really anyway uh because i was planning to have it all the way up to down here ran out of time the time that i set on my on, <laughs> on ourselves but the words the sentence is actually now try to imagine because yeah, it keeps just it just keeps echoing because I keep saying it on the slide, so I can't think of anything else. So that's the only thing that appears in my mind. And yeah, like I think we we see the moon all the time, but we also I I like to imagine the moon in my daydream as well. So that's that's basically um, yeah, that's that. So. Cool. Yeah, it's simple. It's not really anything much, but I think uh, that will be the end of the session uh, for me. Just, uh, just maybe just another reminder to be gentle on yourself uh, when you're doing art. I think um, the common perception is that art only belongs to a certain groups of people with certain abilities or skills or qualifications when that is certainly not the case i think art should be everyone's and uh, please utilize uh, whatever form of art making that makes you happy that makes you feel um, calm and um, good about yourself and about this life so yeah uh, I think that's it for me. Thank you so much for uh, your attention and participation. And I'm sorry if there's anything um, that is hard to understand or if it's too quick or please let me know of any suggestions so I can improve myself. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. That's very uh, interesting and insightful because I guess we never really... And well, I like to write, uh, but I never really make shapes with my writing. So that's a whole new experience for me. And it's very easy because you, all you need is just like a pen and a paper. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're yes. hoping that this session would be useful as well for those of you who are, sta which, uh, who are staying home. Um, we hope that you would be able to still express yourself with uh, the limited uh, resources that uh, you might have. Um, Right, should we move on to the next session? I'll stop sharing. Let me try to pause this for a little bit. Okay. So I'm sharing my screen again uh, for the second part of the session. Can everyone see the screen? Yep. So next we have a session on how to make a collage, which is gonna be delivered by our friend, Ryoga. So hi, Ryoga. Hello, hello. Hi. Could you um, tell us a little bit about yourself, Ga, and probably your art, and maybe what you've been doing this, um, this. And can I share your, can you share your screen, screen not screen, um, your video? Uh, you can start your video because your host has stopped it. Oh, okay, I'll ask you to start your video. <laughs> oh my. Everything stopped. Hey, guys. 
There uh, you go. I can see you now. Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Ryoga. I am um, Kezia's and Monica ex housemate. <laughs> ex housemates, not like ex. <laughs> so like um, I was in hostel and housemate for um, three years. So we spent uh, quality time together quite a lot. Um, <laughs> now I am Glasgow pursuing my master in architecture. Um, I don't, um, it's not an art background, but uh, I do art for fun because I think it releases my stress and kind of like um, there, it's a tools and a, uh, a place for me to uh, release my emotion and then like my experience in life. Um, sometimes um, we face with hardship and stuff like that. And uh, that's where I came uh, first to express myself so I don't um, lose myself, you know, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah. that's, um, that's, what I, that what I, that's what I do. Cool. Um, I think the next question we have for you is, um, can you tell us when you started to fall in love with art? Um, actually, like, I start falling in love with art is around high school because, um, as you can see, um, typical Asian parents, um, they don't see art as a medium to, uh, as a field for you to find money, right? So um, I'm not like exposed to it uh, from the early age stage of my life. But like when I was in high school, uh, I start taking uh, uh, interest in photography. And then um, from there, it grow into me to do painting and stuff like that. So I started just experimenting with um, my friend, taking picture of them. Um, painting over them, um, taking photos, take, making videos, um, like silly videos. Um, and then after that, I'm deciding to take uh, architecture. And mm. suddenly, like, I need to make a portfolio. And I have no skill at all whatsoever in making portfolio and drawing. Mm. So uh, the whole year, I learned how to draw. And from there, I fall in love with art. Mm doing it right now i think um, it's a great medium for me to express myself like i said before mm. i think that's cool in a way that you mentioned that you you had no exposure or you had no um kind of portfolio or skills uh, until you decided to apply for architecture degree and it kind yeah. of shows that you can build your um skills because a lot of people are kind of think myself included um we often say that, oh, we have no uh, I ne in ability uh, to do art or we, ha we have no talent in art, but what you have done kind of show us that um, we can build that uh, skills if we practice and if we spend time doing it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So I think like the, the first uh, fuel for it is, I think it's love. So you need mm -hmm. to love what you do first. If you uh, feel great about it and like you love doing it, so I think you just keep doing it and mm. you, you develop yourself somewhere. Yeah. The, this yes. makes me curious. Can you show us um, some examples of your art? Maybe if you can, if you still have the one that's like the oldest one, the one that you started to do in high school and then probably the arts that you have now. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I prepared that and <laughs> I, like um, the journey of my like the, the things that I do, um, start exploring this um, art. Um, can cool. I share? Yeah, hmm? sure. I'll stop scaring, sharing mine. Um, I, 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 will sh uh, I will start with my painting. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Hello. Can you see it, guys? Yeah, wow. That's what did cool. you see? I see... Uh, I see like my post when I've got my period. <laughs> yeah, it's, you see this? The baby post, yeah. This is actually like my, like one of my uh, most cherished painting right now, uh, until now. This is one of my first painting. Really? 
Yes, and this is like two meters times one meter. This is the time that I don't know how to paint, especially I don't know how to hold a brush. Mm -hmm. So I use my hand to do this mm -hmm. with oil painting. So like every time I, I, uh, I finish painting, like my whole body is covered with oil, oil painting because like I paint with my hand and then like I just express myself. Um, it, this is actually like um, uh, a sketch of, of my ex having cramps in uh, oh. uh, like what do you call it uh like every month you get what is that period, is that period pain yeah, having cramps in period yeah. so oh, like so that's I, quite reading then yeah Dang. yeah no i was just because yeah <laughs> so wow. it's actually like this. so because i don't know how to hold a brush this is how i started painting because of it and then uh, after that i start trying to hold a brush and like trying to kind of um, work on the gradient and like for people and stuff like that. And like, I, I really like to draw like monsters and stuff like that because I don't have background on drawing good, good, good posture of people. So I just draw mm -hmm. something that I really like. Um, and this is like two meters times one meter as well. So I cannot draw something small because it's hard for me, right? So I just do something big mm -hmm. and then when I moved to uh, Newcastle, I really want to paint because like I, st I just started to fall in love with painting. Suddenly like um, the canvas is so expensive, like, oh my God, All right? And then we are like student there. The, the, the currency is different in Indonesia. So I start painting on a cardboard. And then mm -hmm. this is like a, an old TV cardboard. We got a new TV in the accommodation. And I said like, hey, can I get a cardboard? So I get a canvas for free, um, painting in a cardboard. So um, this is actually like, I really like this painting. Um, it's still in my house right now. And then after that, my friend, um, ha he, she moved house. And then he, she asked me, it's like, hey, do you want to paint in my old house? It's like, it's, it's neglected and like nobody lives there anymore. So I paint this. I like, I don't know, it's like three meter time, three meter probably. Mm -hmm. But like... I'm just trying to have fun and like do try um, trying uh, texture and I like using my hands again and it's like um, trying to express myself. Mm -hmm. But um, after architecture, um, that wild side of me uh, be like lower, get lowered down. You know, like it get like oh chill, chill a bit. Like I don't, I don't have this uh, energy anymore to do like a very, very energetic uh, painting with my hand. Mm. So I start um, incorporated everything that I learned in collage, in rendering, in uh, writing, and so. And I started to do this painting. This is like 2019, I think. Mm. 2019, and this is um, talking about uh, what I feel um, hurting our uh, Indonesia. Um, mm. And that time is hoax everywhere. Mm. Hoax it equals hurt. So this is like, um, and like I, I have like a lot of like writings that I want to, um, it's like a letter to the readers of like, or uh, viewers of my painting to see it's like, oh, this is what I feel right now. Um, this is like um, another like small and I'm like, uh, I tried stuff out again, but like, and then, this is uh, all of my deepest secret. I wrote in this paragraph everything. So if you can, if you can see like the real painting, you can read um, all my deepest deeper secret that I want to share, but not really to share, you know? Mm. Uh, because like it's a burden for me to keep a secret. And, uh, and this is how I um, materialize uh, that off uh, about uh, art. And then this is, uh, so I am really interested in writing as well, right? I think mm -hmm. writing is a good medium. And why not combining uh, writing and painting together? So uh, right now, like I have uh, a mission um, to give all of like my closest friend a painting um, with a letter dedicated to them. So and right now I only, give it to my girlfriend and uh, a dear friend of mine, uh, Andre. And then uh, I'm going to give you guys, so you, you need to wait uh, for your turn because it Aww. takes so 
in one. It will be like three months or four months, but you're going to get one. We uh, will. We will yeah. wait. We will. Yeah. You need to write. Uh, you need to read the letters though, like uh, the 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 writings that I'm going to give you. So it's yeah. kind of like a free for all. Um, very very uh, spontaneous things that I think about you guys in the writing. It's like you see like in the uh, below the painting, mm. and then this is actually like my last painting. Um, so I really like to draw girls. I don't know why. I think they're really pretty and beautiful and easier to draw for me. And then like, um, I, I just draw like Indonesian people. This is actually like for a submission for Gallery National, National Gallery in Indonesia, kind of like for their competition, but I didn't pass. That's okay. Um, it's a process, uh, it's actually the process that I enjoy um, myself doing art rather than the uh, finished product. Uh, okay. Oh. Wow. Um, thanks for sharing that. It's great. I think um, if I could make a comment, um, I would say that like those paintings and those artworks of yours really kind of show your personality. Someone who's very like, um, cheerful um, and chaotic in a good way and like very bright and very energetic uh, and that really translates to your work i think oh. <laughs> that's really cool i mean uh, we've seen it a couple of times right one because um, yeah, yeah. we live in a house together but um that's cool yeah thanks for sharing that yeah, thank yeah. you amazing to see yeah thank you guys <laughs> uh, next question we have for you yes. is that like what is art to you because you you mentioned you like writing you like painting you like using different medium mm. it's i think it's the uh, materialization of your um thoughts right and like what is what is a uh, life to you so a lot of artists that I really love to talk about their obsession in life, um, what they really love and like what they want to comment and like what is their emotion, um, exploring emotion, exploring what they see. Um, art, it, art itself that they could produce will change um, throughout their life mm. um, depending on what they have and like what they see. So I see art uh, people's like very very discouraged to do like a lot of people are discouraged to do art because like they don't oh my drawing is not good and stuff like that mm -hmm. and I think um, I understand why they come out in that perspective but I want to uh, show you another perspective on this it's like um, you just need to enjoy the process because like nothing is instant right it's like it's not teleportation that you suddenly like arrive in one place to another it's the journey that is really, really beautiful. That is not only that you produce good drawing, but like you can explore yourself. It's like you can explore your emotion. It's like, oh, I'm feeling really, really um, ang anxious right now. Why I feel anxious? And like I, I've explored that emotion and like I try to make it into an art and I like suddenly like, oh, I can relate to this art. And I like maybe people can relate to my art as well. So. I see art as a process to understand myself. So it's exploration mm. of myself and the understanding of my surrounding. So it's actually the process that I enjoy the most about art, not the final product. So it's, mm. it's in materialization of myself, I think. Right. And like yeah. people, other people's self, and then like you can see why you love Picasso maybe, or like maybe why you love, um, one certain painter or like one certain sculpture because you can relate to that person. Maybe that experience um, correlate with what you are um, experiencing right now. So it's like sharing as well. Probably. It's, like I don't know. it's like a reflection of, in a sense, your personal views, I guess. Um, Growth as well, probably, or yeah. experience. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. Well, we're just linking a little bit um, to our session. Um, 
uh, I think we see a lot of your paintings just now, um, which I think might be quite similar to how you do collages. But could mm. you explain a little bit on maybe what what kind of collage, uh, what is a collage for you, and how do you usually create one? Okay, so uh, I I. I, I can share you um, my college, my college journey. Sure, I'll stop sharing mine, then you can share your screen. My college journey, there it is. Can you see, can you see it guys? Yes. Hello, this is like one of my first collages ever. What is a, what is a collage actually? A collage is actually like a, a pic, kind of like, a cut off picture hmm. and I can put it together either digital or non-digital I can show you like the my traditional collages as well I have some but like I show you like uh, my because like I was an architecture student I I'm privileged to uh, have like a Photoshop and stuff like that to explore from my uni um, because of that I do college uh, the easiest way which is digital for me because like i don't know 21st century right and then i start doing collage like this um taking a picture of myself is actually myself jumping mm. and kind of kind of kind of like um maybe like thinking about the uh, where is the true source and like what is like the, the god of the universe and stuff like that and like inspired by uh, this and then um, ganesha uh, inspired by hindu and like I just start taking picture of my friends, rap in stuff like rap in. This is like just one of the picture, but like I have like um, Polaroid or tip of my friend wrapped in toilet toilet paper, plastic, you know, like this obsession. And then um, most most of my early stuff is really chaotic um, because I don't know what to do. Um, but like it's a part of the journey which is I enjoy the most. Um, you can see this is me trying to use brushes. This is actually like a traditional collages that I do. Like this is a cut out uh, girl from a magazine and I draw over them um, to give them like a tattoo or like a, a, this, this cool um, looking uh, white thingy. I don't know. <laughs> it's a, it's a exper experimentation. And I, I start doing this. Um, trying to put like drawing, um, um, like emotion that I feel about the, put a little bit poetry. Um, I try to incorporate that, uh, trying collages with my own pictures. I like to see like, what, what can I do with this tool? You know, like uh, what can I do with uh, Photoshop? And then like, I like a very kind of like wimp, wimpy, like sis, kind of like sissy as well. Um, mm. talking sassy sassy that's the word sassy, sassy. yeah <laughs> sassy talking is like sorry can't talk i have a boyfriend and like i just like k okay, bye you know something like that and then mm -hmm. this is like you can ex you can experiment with envelope as well this is uh, me ex experimenting with envelope that if you open the envelope you can see another picture below it right so it's pr pretty cool and there's like two um so this is like just the cut out cut out a picture of a girl and then like i put a microphone on it and then like blah 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 like people talking a lot um, and then this is like this is where i starting to get where i my colleges want to go like i love doing old, old picture like old illustration picture because uh, in the college world um it's actually you need to find um if you are taking picture from online you need to get the copyright like copyright free drop picture right so mm -hmm. actually like um picture that is 100 years old or like 200 years old i think it's around there i'm not sure um it's free it's cc0 so it's like it's common 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 use so you can use it for this kind of project without advertising uh, just your your own like this is uh, this is my journey um for the collage like i'm doing old illustration, old, color, uh, old drawing, and I, like cut them out, put them there, stick them there, and I, like block, like trying to find like the balance that I, I like to do. Um, this is actually 
not a collage, but like I treat it like a collage. So like I made the the flamingo in one file and like another in another file and then combine it. So like if you think collage is kind of like that, so like there's another picture and then you put another picture, another picture, another picture. So a lot of thing is a collage, but um, what make a collage um, pretty or, or interesting is like the imperfection of the cutting you know like you mm. cut it like you cannot cut like a very very good in collage but like, because you use a scissor mm. um, but like, i really like that polygonal cutting because of it just like yeah yeah i just like i i want to you to show this like it doesn't need to be perfect uh, but it need to convey some feelings i think mm. um i'll show you my uh, traditional collage so this is like what i came out right now um so it I think it's much better than what I do before. I keep mm. improving myself, um, like adding a very, very uh, detailed, a small. Uh, you, you can see here, right? The the jellyfish, all the jellyfish is like a different uh, picture, but I put it together in a certain way to see this jellyfish woman. Um, this is a superhero that I made. Uh, this is another one. And then this is the most recent one, which is I really like this three cats mm. um, going shopping. <laughs> and like this three girls going shopping and like this. And I'm like, oh yeah, this is actually like um, my thoughts on Jakarta when they are flooding. Mm. So it's like this, it's like so sad. I was only there in the ceiling looking down on the flood from afar. That's a lyric from Father John Misty's Spirit Comedy. Yes, right? yes, it is. Love Father John Misty. Oh so cool. <laughs> I love I love him so much from the bottom of my heart. Um I think I think his his music is an art as well in itself. It's a it's a poetry. It's really De cool. Definitely. Um I'm going to share you one more thing. There it is. This is my traditional um collage. Hmm. What so what do you mean by uh, traditional? Traditional collage is like this is a cut out from magazine. Hmm. All of them is from magazine uh, for the things that I found. So I go, I usually go to a second hand bookshop hmm. and like just get loads loads of random magazine, um, so I can cut them out, put them together, um, trying to see um, what I can do. And then after that, because like I show you my background in digital collaging right i combine them together to make mm. like this and then this is like the 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 original like a traditional collage and i make them something like that so i try stuff a lot of like new things um to see like what can i achieve with these two different medium um, it's all experimenting and some of the collages like I'm, I'm not really proud of like there's there is like um, bad collage as well but it's okay it's okay it's okay to get uh, to have a bad drawing bad painting like if you see like a good painting in the museum you see only the good painting right you don't know what they've been um, doing in mm. the studio they probably have like 2000 or there's a saying that uh, artists have like 2000 bad painting or something like that so like they have a lot of bad painting as well it's, it's a process so um well you are at it just enjoy yourself why 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 uh, why not just enjoying this this uh, collage moment i think it's really really beautiful and this one uh, and then like you can see a lot of it like this one and then mm. this is this is the, I think this is a very failed collage. <laughs> I don't really like it at all. Mm. That's why like, I didn't put it in the digital version. Um, this is just an example of uh, that experience that I have. And I think it's kind of okay. So like, oh, this, this doesn't work. Maybe I can try another stuff that will work or maybe um, something like that. Cool, I think that's very cool. Thanks for sharing that, for sharing your work. Um, 
interesting that I interesting thing that I came across from our sessions today is uh, like this common thing the common thing between you two is that we do a lot of like stacking because um, one of the example from Karen is also uh, uh, one of the artists is stack uh, his words um, and stack his kind of artwork uh, and your um, collage yoga as well shows kind of a lot of like stacking um, I guess stacking is kind of arranging yes. sort of in layers um, I think that's really cool and because we don't have uh, a lot of time to go into the kind of detailed workshop about collage I think this is uh, what Monica and I wanted to encourage our learners uh, that if you have time sometime this week um, to kind of uh, try to make your own collage. Uh, you can see in the screen here, uh, there's a couple of cutouts of um, just papers. Maybe you can find newspapers or use magazines or if you can't um, go outside uh, maybe just use papers among the house. You can draw yourself and then wrap yes. uh, and then kind of tear that drawing as well um, and make a collage. Uh, take a photo of it, send it to Ness, uh, send it to the um, WhatsApp group or email it um, to us and we'll be happy to kind of review it and um, yeah, just share to kind of show um, your art. Yeah. that would be really cool you can use a lot of brochures as well if mm. you don't That's find it just don't use your textbooks i guess so yeah. very generous. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of uh, brochures in the uh what is it called the the mail usually the mail yeah the mailing the mailing box i mean you can use newspaper and then like maybe uh, experiment with texture not, mm. not a drawing but like a text maybe for texture or like maybe you can treat it in different way like watercolor painting probably like or, or like um use your onion to stamp something <laughs> on it you know like you just like try stuff out maybe it doesn't work that's okay like it, it doesn't work that you know it doesn't work maybe you mm. can try incorporate another stuff on it that's cool. I hope I hope uh, our learners today have found uh, things that are insightful um, and enjoyable uh, about arts. I think that inspire. I think I, I hope it inspires you to create as well. Um, I guess this is the end of the session, Yamon. Yes. Uh, yeah. So thanks for tuning in. Thank you for uh, Karin and Ryoga for. Um, hosting the workshops and showing your um, artworks and sharing your experience. If you have any questions, definitely put them in the comment box. I feel like I'm a YouTuber now. I'm not, but uh, uh, I'm living my childhood dream of being a radio announcer. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, if you have any uh, suggestions for themes or workshops that you'd like to see please comment them as well um yeah Monica, you forgot something hmm? okay you forgot what, something what do i forget hey guys don't follow don't don't forget to like follow uh, and subscribe that's true. <laughs> Down below. Yeah. Uh, like uh what like share and subscribe right yes oh. Post the button down there below yeah <laughs> forget um, the notification bell <laughs> Um, much too much YouTube. Uh, but yeah, thanks guys. I hope you enjoy the session. Uh, please do tune in to uh, the next sessions all week. I think we're here all week for you. Um, and see you on the next session. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.